because a ship is more safe at the harbor. But the ship was not made to stay at the harbor, it was made to sail. And there's going to be some winds. There's going to be some waves. Some. A lot of time in our Christian journey, we have to get to that point in our life where there's going to be troubles on every hand. But we have to make a decision. Am I going to live or am I going to die? Whatever we are going through, as long as Jesus Christ is in it, we will be okay. Jesus is all right. He's the power over day and night. He's the power over death and the grave. Jesus is all right. But when I say run, he fired the shot and it catched the person behind me. He shot him in the hip. Up until today, he still have that bullet in his hip.
praise God. We are giving God thanks. Praise his holy name. Praise God. Praise Lord Church. Praise Lord Church. Please pray for me whilst I trust in this song in Jesus' name. My heart can sing when I pause to remember a heartache is but a stepping stone along the path that keeps on winding upwards. This troubled world is not my, my final home. My heart can see when I pause to remember a heartache head, it's but a stepping stone along the path that keeps on winding upwards.
God. Praise God. Praise the Lord Jesus. We are giving God thanks for such a beautiful song. And we must always remember to keep him in our prayer. Praise the Lord Jesus. And that is Let us praise Jesus. Let us praise Jesus. Let us praise Jesus. You have heard of little Moses in the bulrush. You have heard of fearless David and his sling. You have heard the story told of dreaming Joseph and of Jonah and the well you often sing. There are many, many others in the Bible. I would like to meet them all, I do declare. By and by the Lord will surely let us meet them at the meeting.
praise God. We're giving God thanks in that beautiful song. Praise God. And at this time, we have like to render a song to the church in Jesus' name. Praise God. Lord Jesus. Praise God. We are giving God thanks for the two little ones. We are giving God thanks. 
and we must remember to keep them in our prayer that they will grow up with the fear of the Lord and they will stay in church in Jesus' name. Let's praise the Lord, everybody. Let's praise the Lord, everybody. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I just want to greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to greet our pastor, to each and every officers and members, in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Bless God. God is a good God. Yes? And uh, we may not know how, we may not know when, but according to the songwriter, he'll do it again. Yes? In the day of uh, when the children of Israel were about to cross the Red Sea, yes? They had Pharaoh coming behind them and mountains on both sides. And uh, out of nowhere, God stepped in and he made a highway just like that. And he said in his word that without faith, it is impossible to please God. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. No, you know, no faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You know, without, and, and the scripture in Proverbs say that hope deferred make it the heart sick. And if hope is something that we can see, then it is not necessarily hope. So I want to just encourage somebody today. Yes, that whatever situation you're finding yourself in, because every day it's another set of challenges, right? And it's like uh, one minute you're going through one and the next minute another one come and you have so much going through and it seems like it is so overwhelming. But I want to say to you that nothing is impossible when it comes to God. And you must cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. And so sometimes you're like, you don't feel that God cares. But I want to say to you, cast not away your confidence because great is your recompense of reward. And I want you to know that life and light is in the word of God. So I want to encourage you to use the word of God because the weapons of our warfare is not carnal, but it is mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So we have to recognize that the flesh cannot please God. Bless the name of Jesus. But we have to use the spirit to recognize the things that are happening in the spiritual world. Bless the Lord. Because it is, if it was in this life alone that we had hope, then we would be men most miserable. And so I want to encourage you today that not because the challenges might seem overwhelming means that it is going to always be like this. When the children of Israel were about, were in front of the Red Sea, I can can only imagine how they fret and they worried because they said like this is it they're going to be taken back into bondage but I want to say to you today that that was the very last day that they faced their enemies the Egyptians because God was going to make a way out of no way he made a way in the water so that the children of Israel could have walked on dry land and so I say this to remind you that despite your circumstances, despite your situation, that God is still God. And beside him, there is no other. He's a God that neither slumber and he's a God that neither sleep. That's why the psalmist David, he could have said, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And so David in another time, he said, the Lord hear thee in a day of trouble. So when the children of Israel, they saw what was happening and they cried out unto the Lord, the Lord made a way. Bless the name of Jesus. But the Egyptians, they thought that that way was also made for them. But I want to say that God was still God in the midst of their circumstances. And he allowed the Egyptians to die. He allowed Pharaoh and his army to die that very day. So I want to say to you that the enemies that you see today will no longer be the enemies into your tomorrow. It will no longer be the enemies into your future. And I want to say to you that when you see the enemies, the, the, the psalmist said that the 
they seem to be spreading like the green bay tree but in the evening they will wither and fall away so i want to say that the wickedness of the wicked must come to a perpetual end so no matter what storm cloud no matter what enemy is in your life i want to remind you that their day is coming bless the name of jesus that they will not be with you forever and there's gonna be a time when you're gonna dance and you're gonna shout and you're gonna praise god so even if you feel a bit discouraged if you feel a bit down if you feel like god have forgotten if you feel like the enemy is being more prosperous than you i want to remind you that what god gives you he never takes it back but what the enemy gives he's gonna draw back and he's gonna give some stipulations but i want to say that god's gift is without calling and without repentance so when god gave good gifts he said you must covet good gifts bless the name of jesus and so i want to say to you hallelujah do not be afraid he gave the word to joshua he said be not he said fear not be not afraid you know be not dismayed you may have bosses who are giving you a hard time you may have co-workers who are giving you a hard time you may have family members who are giving you a hard time you may have friends who turn to be enemies and they're giving you a hard time but i want to say to you today that their day is coming bless the name of jesus that it won't always be like this bless the lord and that, that it's spoke in the scriptures that it is better for a millstone to be hung around their neck than for them to trouble the least of God's children. So do not worry. Don't be dismayed. And even if you have been weeping, I just want to encourage you that weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. I want to say that the darkest hour of the night is just before dawn. Your greatest pain is just before your greatest victory so I want to remind you that even if you feel like you're going to the fire you remember that the, the three Hebrew boys they went through the fire but not one here of their bodies was burnt and not only that just look at the analogy of uh, the simit the gold simit when he made that gold the gold had to go through fire and it had to be found to get rid of the impurities so I want to remind Mind you that God is making you into perfect pure gold. I want to say that you are on the potter's wheel. He is molding and making you according to his divine will. So trust the potter. The songwriter said the father wants to put you back together again. The vessels that have been marred, the vessels that have been broken, the vessels that have gone through many pains, the vessels that have gone through many distresses, that God is going to give you joy for your mourning. He's going to give you happiness even in times of your despair. So even though the willows may blow and the storms may rise, just remember that God is in the midst of of it and if he did that in times of all for the children of Israel to allow them to cross on dry land it is not possible but with God it was possible and he brought them through the wilderness and he brought them into the land of Canaan and he fed them day by day so it is that the Lord will continue to preserve and to keep you if you continue to trust in the name of the Lord your God put your faith and trust in God because because everything else will fail. The saying says uh, that if you tried everything and everything failed, try Jesus. Uh, because Jesus is the only name under heaven whereby you must be saved. Uh, it is also the only name where demons and devils tremble. And so I want to remind you when you are going through your valley situation that you just press forward, press towards the mark, uh, the mark of the higher calling, which is in Christ Jesus. So be encouraged. Do not be discouraged because God is the great encourager. If you feel like you have gone weary, just trust in God. Allow him to water your soul because the psalmist David, he said, 
For you shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water that bring forth fruit in season and out of season. Just trust in God. Just continue to dig deeper into God, to dig deeper into the soil of God because that's where your nutrients come from. That is the foundation, the solid rock where you cannot be moved. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, leading not to your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him God and he shall direct your path. God bless you in Jesus name. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Oh yes. Oh yes. Over death and the grave. Jesus is all right. Jesus is all right. He is the power over day and night. He is the power over death and the grave. Jesus is all right. Jesus is all right. He is the power over day and night. He is the power over death and the grave. Jesus is all right. Jesus is all right. He is the power over day and night. He is the power over death and the grave. Over there. 
praise God, and you know, you know, because I've never had an accident before, so I was like, oh my God, you know, but I, I was just something was just hit me, come. And before that, I was praising, praising in the car, praising, just praising, praising, but it was so heavy, heavy. I've never been in a situation like that, but I pressed, I pressed, I pressed things, I pressed, and I pressed, and I pressed. Praise God, the name of Jesus is powerful. He break every chain. He break every chain. I said, God, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. In the mighty name of God, thank you, God, for my life, for my children.
strength because I gain more strength. Amen. I will call again because I feel like pressing my way. I was so 
But when Brother Ian was saying, Jesus said to them, I am. I tell you, amen. I am the resurrection of the life. He that believeth in me. No, he was dead. No, he was dead. Yes. I give God thanks. I am. Yes, Lord. I am. Thank you. Glory to God. I yes. Say. Glory to God. Supposed to go somewhere yesterday. Jesus. Supposed to go to a place, but circumstances change. So my son-in-law, after circumstances change. He was worried because what he was thinking about, he have a cooker and it's not working. So it's only one burner was working and is there for hours. He said he didn't sleep for the whole night, Friday night he didn't sleep because he worried about the cooker. Came in the kitchen, he don't know what to do, he just worried. Mm -hmm. I said to him, I go over this room, I said, we light it. Yes. Yes. That's right. Yes. Yes. I said, light it. Yes. 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 Praise God. Yes. Turn it on. Yes. Praise God. He said, I have to go out the kettle to pour in the pot before because it takes so long. I said, the name of Jesus. Yes. I stand right beside him. Because we're not with a bad position there right now. Yeah. Everything pile of nothing can cook. Yeah. I said, light it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Yeah. Light them. Light it. We go and we come back and we do like this. Thank you. You're coming now. You're coming now. Remember the other one. The other a new cooker. And he's not going to come until tomorrow. So you must know. So while we were there, we hear him go beside his chair. I said, come here. Feel this man. Yes. He said, but what's going on? Thank you, Jesus. I am Jesus. Amen. The resurrection of the life. Yes, sir. 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 Y
the water. You know, I'm not singing the song, Jesus be a friend. But around me every day. But I want you to protect me as I travel along the way. I went, uh, Evangelist Douglas gave her a testimony. She put me back um, a couple months ago. I was around 9 going to 10 at night and I dropped to security and I to work. And I was driving um, down Eastern Avenue. So for those of you who know, who know Eastern Avenue, I was coming up to uh, the Newbury Park Station, for those who know. So, um, so it's about three lanes, yeah, three lanes of, of traffic going down towards Haven. And uh, it's around 40 miles per hour, 40 miles per hour. So um, on this particular, this particular night, I was on front of me about 35 and going down. So I'm coming up to the, to the lights just before Newby Park Station, where you turn left into Newby Park Station. And as soon as I get to the lights, there's a car on my far right, and as soon as I get to the lights, it goes amber, but I can't break. So, like I said, I'm not speeding. Brethren, the car to the right, so in, in, for those who can picture Eastern Avenue, the car to the far right, brethren, swung, literally, from the right lane, straight across into Newby Park Station. Traveled across three lanes of traffic and went into the station. I've never, I don't usually get flight and driving, driving. But I couldn't break, you can understand what I mean. I couldn't break because the reaction I had would have been very slow. When you just start running out of my car and I didn't have to break, I could just go through. If anyhow, I was doing. 40, four plus. This guy would have taken out the middle of my car and literally hit me into Newby Park Station. Or I would have taken him out. But I'm with you. When I, when I, when I got home, it's like, for, it's like all the time I was professional to turn me out of driving. It's like I was in a daze. And when I got home and I parked, I just took the deepest breath that I just said, you need to start moving yes. again. So we leave you my heart for you. And I just said to myself, that was not me. That was not me. And I can't remember if I was on the phone to my mom, I can't remember. But all I know is that when I prayed, I said, God, thank you. Because so many times when we drive up, sometimes we forget to even say a prayer. And even when I forget, I break the car and I pray. And I said, God, so many times it's because of that prayer. That you protect us, that you guide us, we pray you, God knows. If that man did ever hit me that night, baby, God knows I wouldn't be here to tell the story. And I give God thanks and I give God praise for protection.
fire The blood will give to the weakling Send the fire, send the fire, send the fire Praise the Lord Jesus. We're going to hear the brothers come out and testify. All the brothers come back. You must have a testimony. Come. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. I give honor to the Spirit of God, my mother and pastor, the ministers, evangelists, the household of faith in the mighty name of Jesus. Truly, I'm giving God thanks. Amen, and that I'm alive and well in this present tonight. Nothing good that I've done, but because of his wonderful his mercy and his compassion. Amen, as our dear sister over there was singing the song when, we, when she was still giving a testimony. And she was singing the, the song like a ship sailing out. On, um, I will find rest in the eye of the storm. Amen. I've been in a lot of hurricanes in Jamaica. So I kind of understand when they're saying about the rough and the tumble. And as she was singing the song, I was just standing there thinking because I was back in Jamaica on holiday. I can't remember which one it was, what year. And I think it was Hurricane Frankie that came through. I think it was Frankie that was called. And I was there in the house that was at our auntie's house. And I secured all the awning because we, we had the warning that Hurricane was going to come. So I secured all the awning, tied them down, tied down everything, secure, wrap around the house and do everything that I could because I was the only man in the house. The children were young. And I was there and then when the Hurricane was passing through, it started lifting up the awning. And the trees outside was blowing, the, the trees was breaking down, the power line outside, bur the transformer burst outside. All of that was going on. But I had a decision that I had to make. Because I said, if the awning get popped fully off, the house is going to get flooded out and water and everything is going to come in and we're not going to be protected. So I had to go out in there and, while the storm was going on and try to secure it. While I'm looking over my head while I'm doing it, that nothing follow me. And I just look at it spiritual as our dear sister was singing the song, find rest in after storm. A lot of time in our Christian journey, we have to get to that point in our life where there's going to be troubles on every hand. But we have to make a decision. Am I going to live or am I going to die? Am I going to protect my soul or am I going to just let it go? And that is what I was getting from that when she was singing. And that is the thought that came to me that no matter what storm, no matter what we're going through, that we will find rest in the eye of the storm. Because if we have the determination that Jesus will protect us, if we have the confidence that he will that be a fence around us, if we have the confidence that no matter what we are going through, he will see us through, we shall be okay. We shall make it. So find confidence. Put your trust in God. And he will never let us down. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Of you making sure that you can share. Praise the Lord, church. Yeah, Praise the Lord, church. I'm giving God thanks that I can have another time to speak on, on the word of God. Um, as we were singing the song, Send the Fire, um, the verse that caught me was to burn out every trace of sin. Yes. I said to bring the light and glory in. And it said the revolution now begins. And I was just looking into it as Brother Dave was saying that this is not the time to play. Um, the signs are being foretold. They're saying that there's going to be more wars. There's been earthquakes. There's been rumors of wars. There's been famine. There's been pestilence. Everything that we need to see is being shown. I'm just asking God that will help us, that we'll open up our eyes, that we'll get our heart right, that God can really send the fire in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. I'm greeting my mother and pastor and also the faith. I'm giving God thanks for his love and his compassion and his mercy towards me. Regina, I'm saying I'm sitting there as my mother and pastor called us to, give, to testify. I'm saying that years ago, I was back in Jamaica, never safe. But I prayed to God and make a vow to him that if he let me come to England, I'll serve him. Regina, I came to England and I was doing my own thing. But I'm giving God thanks that he remember my promise that I make to him. And I'm asking him to keep me, no matter whatever star may come, that he will keep me and I will make it true in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord Church, praise the Lord Church. I'm thanking God for waking me up to see another day and thanking God for his mercies because even the other day, I heard another boy that was my age, grew up with him in school. He died in a moped crash 
just around the corner from school and like, it's nothing good that I've done because that could have been me, it could have been anyone that, that's in her, my age, but I'm just thanking God for his mercy, his continuity, and I pray that he just keeps me in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. Bless the name of Jesus. Great song, mother and pastor, evangelist, everyone, ministers in Jesus' name. Thank you, God, that I can be found in his presence on another Sunday. Not the good that I have done while I'm standing here, but it's the mercy of God. I thank you, God, for this song because it says, look down and see the waiting host. Give us the promised Holy Ghost. But while the choir was singing it, it says, give us, but I can't speak for other people. Send the fire, send the fire. God knows that I need him. I just thank you, God. I just thank you, God, for another Sunday here. You know, in, uh, on the way to church, I was saying that even though my parents wasn't baptized, they used to send me and my brother to Sunday school. And, you know, I thank you, God, for that seed that's planted because no matter what happens, that seed is still there. No matter what I go through, no matter what I do, that seed is still planted there. I thank you, God, for him keeping me. I please pay my strength in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Greetings to pastor, everyone, in Jesus' name. You know, while I was sitting there, I was thinking about the song that said, The mighty God is Jesus. It's a king of king, is he? The everlasting father. King eternity. And they had a, they had a verse that it's all in him. And I was saying, God, I thank you that I know that it's all in you. It's not in the Wobia man. It's not in the gun. It's not in the drugs. It's all in him. Pray for me in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. Greet each and every one in Jesus' name. Yes, yes, yes. Give God thanks. Glory, 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 glory. Yes, yes, yes. Brother, yes, the young brothers were singing. Glory, 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 glory. Yes. I know the Lord yes. will fix yes. it for me. If I hold to his hand and live yes, by Lord. his glory, command, glory. Yes, I know the Lord will fix it for yes. me. I give God thanks. I looked into yes. the Sunday school lesson a week ago. Yes. And we talked about the sons of Zebedee. Yes. When the mother of the sons of Zebedee asked to have their sons sit one on the right and one on the left. And how Jesus said, you don't know what you're asking. For the cup that I drink from and the baptism that I have to take, you can't take it. Then how Brother Howard and Evangelist Cameron said, it was a sorrowful thing. This road isn't easy, but I know the Lord will fix it for me. If I hold to his hand and live by his command, I know the Lord will fix it for me. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. I give God thanks to Pastor Douglas. I give God thanks to every one of us inside here. And from 2012 going up to 2013, I asked Sister Claudine, I want to find a good church. And she bring me in this church from 2012 to going to 2013. And I'm still here today. I'm still here today. I'm going to have to give God thanks. If, I, if, if, if she never bring me in this church, I was looking for a church and I couldn't find one here. And I find this church here. Amen. And I give God thanks. Amen. And I come in this church and I took sick from 2015. I took sick in an hospital. And Virgin, I'm telling you, everybody come look for me. When I look on my bedside and I never know none of you know, inside here, I never know nobody. But God's used, you know, Amen. use pastor to send, you know, yes. come look for me. Amen. And everybody carried things in their hand. Amen. Till a man was beside me, and him count everybody at my bedside. Yes. And he started to swear. And he said, nobody know me. Nobody know me. And I said, it's God why these people are around me. Amen. So I have to give God thanks for this church. Just pray my strength that I stand here and worship God. Look at all of these men in this church. We could have out there. We have to pray for the man and pray for we. Just pray for we. That we can stand up and serve God the right and proper way. 
Just pray. We have, to, we have to pray for it. And pray my strength in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray the Lord Jesus. Pray the Lord Jesus. Girls, pastors, saints, visiting friends. I greet you again in the mighty name of Jesus. We sang the song, Send the Fire. But the fire is already here. It's here already. You just have to accept it and receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Church. Praise the Lord Church. Praise the Lord Church. I greet my pastor, ministers, evangelists, all the saints in Jesus' name. I give God thanks again for bringing me to his house one more time, for sparing my life to see another day. You know, um, earlier in the week, um, I think it was Monday, before I put the children to bed, I knelt with them by their bed and I sing. And he sang something. I can't remember what he sang, but in his own way, he sang something. He said, Daddy, can you sing with me? So I said, yes. I said, what's the song you want to sing? I said, you raise it. And she raised the song, I am determined to hold out to the end. Jesus is with me. On him I can depend. And I was saying to myself in my heart, I said, what do you know about being determined to hold out? But if you understand what, in my heart, I was saying, God, please help me. Because even in that, I said, God, help me that I hold out, that I will be the perfect example, that at the end of the day, when, it, when push comes to shove, that they can look to me for an example that I am holding out. Please pray for me in Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Greetings to each and every. Greetings to my pastor in the mighty name of Jesus. I was there. Many of you wouldn't have known me now. Um, years ago, about 1995, the 18th of July, I was almost killed by fire. Reason me, first time I'm testifying about it because I don't think many people know unless we were. In that year, the volcano erupted. And as it came, I was singing a song that says, Send the fire. I could have been dead. Because from a normal day, it turned to a tragedy. And we took it simple. I could have been dead by a volcano. And it just came back to me while I was here. Because I talked about it many times to people casually. But tonight is the first time it hit me and it hit home that I could have gone by fire and I would not be in here. I would have never had a chance to make it right. So as the song says, send the fire. I don't want that fire. I want the fire of the Holy Ghost. I'm just asking God to just please give me, God, let me be in the right place to accept him in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. Praise God. Greeting to my pastor and the household of faith. I'm giving God thanks for allowing me to be in his house tonight. You know, I thank God that I'm standing amongst brethren who are serving God. I could have been somewhere else, but you know, to, you know it, 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 bring, it came home to me as I was standing there that I'm not standing on the street corner in a gathering doing dreadful things. I'm here to give God thanks. It's truly a pleasure to be here and an honor, you know, by God that he saved my life when he did. I am truly grateful to be in the house of the Lord. Regin, if un until you experience it, then you, you wouldn't know, you know. And I'm, I'm truly giving God thanks for my life. I'm giving God thanks for all of you because all of you has touched my life by what you have experienced, you know, to show me that, you know, God is still in the works of helping and delivering. You know, I'm giving God thanks for all the, all the issues that I've been through in the past because that's what makes me who I am today. You know, as I was sitting down in my seat, I was thinking of, you know, my testimony is always about, is always about gone, you know, and, you know, almost dying. And I'm saying, God, I thank you. I thank you so much. I was sharing it with Brother Clifton a few weeks ago. 
And I was saying, you know, when Elder Henry was talking the other day, you know, I was saying, God, I thank you. You know, because we had some thing happen in the estate over on Forest Road when two young men walked past. Say they walked past here and they walked through the aisle. And there was a group of us just like how we are tonight. But there is always one in the pack. Always one. When the guy then reached down the road now, he decided that he wanted to chase after them. Not when they was in the midst of us, when they, when they can run away. So they run away. And then later on in the night, they came back. And there was only two of us when they came back. The two who did not run after them, what was sitting there, waiting, you know. And when they came, I thought that there was one of us because they, he came with his hoodie on and his hands in his pocket, you know. And as he was walking towards me, and my other friend, because we were sitting down on the, on the side of the building. But when he reached down, and then he pulled out what he had, brethren. And when he pointed it, that's when I realized that he's not one of us. And then the person who was behind me, brethren, when I say, how should I get shot in my face? But when he, when he pointed and he was walking, I, I said to the other guy, run. But when I say run, he fired the shot. And it catch the person behind me. He shot him in the hip. Up until today, he still have that bullet in his hip. Because if they did cut it out at the time, brethren, he would have been paralyzed. You know, I have a lot to give God thanks for. I have so much to give God thanks for. Because, you know, when you're in sin, you don't understand the danger that you're in. But only till you come to this marvelous light of Amen. accepting Christ, Amen. you realize how good God is. Amen. God is a good God. Amen. Virgin, God is so good to Amen. us. All we need to do is just give him what he's deserving. Amen. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I know this was going to fall upon church. That's why we're going to be back. I don't understand what's going to be. What's going to be? What's going to be? What's going to be? What's going to be? For his tender mercy, was he? For his grace and his compassion. I know myself, he's not going to have no word. Why is it because of his divine mercy? Why are you standing tonight? And I can greet you in no other name, but in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Father, we give you a hand. As the sister was singing the song about the wind, I remember many of many of you who passed away now, and I just didn't know. In Jamaica, when Sam was coming, 1964. 1964. We have to go around and go back to the windows with our grandfather at the time. I remember they got a stamp from here in Florida. Florida, they can look up. 1964. And where we live, we live on the other snow road. And the breeze laughs like this. Laugh. And it comes in three different places. I remember when it's been like that. It's been. And it shook. And it went to the Christian in Kingston. And it destroyed Kingston. Can't get that. That's why the songwriter said. Songwriter said. When the day of Pentecost. Fully come. Solidly. Solidly.
and say testimony, but it's a long time, yeah? When I was in Jamaica, yeah, I was involved in a fight and I get a stab to my neck, yeah? I remember when I get a stab to my neck, I could hardly speak. And after leaving hospital after six days, and sometimes you might hear my voice go away because of the injury to my neck. I want to tell you, it's a healing in this church, yeah? Yes. And I'm going to tell you, I used to suffer from a muscular pain at my neck. I used to have to keep rubbing it, yeah? If I eat, I have to be very careful as I would choke. Even my saliva would choke me. But I remember I was in fasting service. And our pastor said, if you're even sick, you can't pray for yourself. And I'm going to tell you how long was this. There was a time when the olive oil was there, right there. That's a lot, I'll tell you. The olive oil was right there. And I remember when she said, I take it, and I take the olive oil, and I rub to my neck. And I said, God, move this, Lord. Move this. Move this. And I can tell you that from that day until now, I don't, sometimes I even forgot, and sometimes I'm eating too fast, <laughs> and then I remember that. But I tell you, I don't feel that contract to my neck again. And I know, yeah, I tell you, man, it may sound simple, but the agony I used to feel on my neck at times. And I tell you, from that day until now, I can say there's a relief in my neck. And it's just because of this church. I'm glad the day I enter into this church. This church. Oh my gosh. It was a turnaround in my life. It was a really a turnaround in my life. And I'm pushing. I'm holding fast. I can remember one of the first lessons. I was sharing with Brother Adrian today too. One of the first lessons I learned in this church. God bless our, our pastor. I said when I came in this church, I don't just get a mother. And they get both a mother and a father. You know, I'm telling a man, a minister named Minister Roland. Yes. Yeah? And he asked mom permission to teach me. Because yes. I said he wouldn't do it unless mom agreed. And one of the first lessons he taught me in this church, he said, I'm going to take it to a scripture. And it is in Exodus 23. He said, I want you to pay attention to two words. He said, two words. And it was a time when God told Moses to come up into the mountain. But God said, come up to the mountain and be there. He said, be, pay attention to those two words. Be there. Be there. And Moses went up into the mountain. And the first day, God didn't come. But he said, be there. Listen to that. Be there. The second day, God didn't come. The third day, God didn't come. Remember, he was in the mountain, therefore, elements from outside was affecting him. Breeze was blowing, rain was falling, everything was happening to him. But God said, be there. The fourth day, God didn't come. 
And brethren, God didn't appear to Moses until on the six days. And he tell, teach me that he said, when you're in church, if God don't come same time, don't worry. What you're going to get from God, you have to be there. You have to wait and, then, and be of good courage. Because element from outside going to affect you. But God said, be there, I'm coming. So trust God, be there. And wait patiently. If you're going to get too nervous or angry, you have no patience. I don't know what yet, but he said, be there. And I'm waiting patiently. And I pray, you spare my strength while I wait in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, Church. Praise the Lord, Church. Praise the Lord, Church. Praise Lord. I agree, as what Brother Ian was saying this morning, it's just playing over my head, it's playing over and over my head. It's a, faith, it's, a, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And me, myself, as a young man in the church, but I need to be an example. I, I feel like personally, I want to be an example to the youngers coming up, like Dave Jr., like um, my brother Ray and Jaden. I want to be an example to them, but I can't be an example because it's, 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 it's crazy because I look at um, people like Minister Pike, um, Brother Dave, uh, Brother, Ian, Brother Ian as well. Like when I, when I see, I was looking back, I can't remember who I was with. Who was, I can't remember who I was with. He was looking at some videos of church back in the day. Um, I think it was that video on YouTube, from, I think 2002 it was. And I see all the young people there. Like, they were younger than me at the time. But the way that they were pushing in the church, like, the way, like, they were zealous for God. Let us praise Jesus, brethren. Let us praise Jesus, brethren. Let us praise Jesus, brethren. The songwriter said, like a ship sailing out, you know, on the trip so rough and long, so far from home, so far from shore, I set out in search of a reason, you know, to go on. And sometimes when we are on the ship, as the songwriter said, although the ship may be rocking and the sails may be torn and not even that I'll rest, but sometimes when the sail you know, is torn and the ship is rocking, uh, we're thinking that the ship is not going anywhere and we get discouraged, we get afraid not knowing that even though the sails is torn, we forget that Jesus Christ is still in it. But still we cannot see him. And what we do, what I did, we jump off and think that we can swim to shore. Not knowing that the water is deep and we are going to sink. And sometimes when we sink, if there is no one there to rescue us, we are gone. So I am asking you all just to, you know, just to pray for me. Because no matter how, how you know, the sails might be torn, think about the waves. That boat, that, that, that wave will eventually bring that boat to the eye of the storm. Because no matter whatever we are going through, as long as Jesus Christ is in it, we will be okay. The writer said that we should trust in the Lord with all our hearts and lead not unto our own understanding. And in all our ways, we should acknowledge him and then he shall direct our path. So I am just asking, you know, that, that I will just leave everything to God. You know, to be honest, Virgin, there's a lot of things that I, that I would like right now. You know, a better house. You know, a better car. Eventually to get married. But the writer said that we should seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all things shall be added. 
And then a further scripture said that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. So imagine, you know, I got a job a couple of months ago thinking, you know, that this job was gonna give me certain satisfaction. And all it did was just took me away from church. You know, I said to the boss, I, I am a Christian and before I never used to tell anyone that. But I am proud to tell anyone that these days. I said, I have to be in church. And she looked at me and she said, well, that is the nature of retail. And then for some reason I prayed and I prayed and I said, God, you need to do something for me. And just before I went to Jamaica, I walk out of that job, I just step. And when I got back, when I got to Jamaica, I got an interview and I was hired from Jamaica and I stepped into another job, a better job, a job that I am doing my own rotors, a job that I can be here. Because the songwriter said, there are days I like to be all alone with Christ my Lord. Yes, that is true. But then there are times when I want to be with the brethren, to fellowship, because that united we stand, but divided we fall, and iron sharpeneth iron. And just, you know, just, and the reason why I'm saying iron sharpeneth iron, someone gave a testimony um, a few months ago that how they never, you know, get on with their dad because of X, Y, and Z. Well, the last time my dad gave me something was probably when I was 10 years old. He gave me 50 cent, Jamaican 50 cent, and I gave it back to him. And then my mother has two of us for him. And instead of looking after us, he went and, you know, married some woman with six kids, sent them to school, and it was just me and my brother. And as a result of that, I hated the very ground that he walked on. And then when I heard someone stand up here and say that they've been through certain similar situations, I look into myself and I said, I said, God, you know, this has to stop. Yes. You know, this has to stop because I am meant to bury the old man. And when I went to Jamaica recently, not only did I buy something for him, I gave him, I gave him some money. Yes. Do you understand? And I had a conversation with him, even though it is difficult to forget, but I have forgiven him. So I'm just asking the church, you know, just to pray for me that no matter how much the seals is torn, just pray for me that I will stay on the ship because I know that the waves will carry me in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. Greetings to my pastor. And greetings to all the saints and brother in Christ. That greetings. I just um, I was trying to um, avoid my um, testimony um, earlier on, and then what happened is um, pastor um, do the roll call and we have to come up again. So you can't run from God because He see all things and know all things. Yeah. Well, what happened the other day? Um, I went to Coventry just to take my son to um, and campus for boarding for university. So. Um, when I was going up there, um, so we were in the van for the day, just to take his luggage and stuff like that. So, on my way up there, I go down at a reasonable speed. But, so when I'm coming back, you know, well, just before that, um, when I leave in the university, normally uh, I, I pray with, uh, with the man. Yes, I, I, so, so, so we prayed. Anyway, there was, they didn't, his attempt to pray. But anyway, I said, well, let, let's pray. So I prayed. And I said to, to his mom, when I'm going back down, I'm not going to go down as hard as I, I came up. So I go down easy. Um, coming down easy was raining. And it, during, in the, in the, I'm coming at about 60 miles per hour coming down. It's, it's raining. So I, I go up there harder than that. But coming down easy because I'm not going to go, um, come down as, as how I went up. Anyway, trying to get the van go back. So I was trying to. Stay, stay in line, pushing it a bit. In, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in the in the course of driving down, someone from the other side just come across, spinning the lane, and they're spinning, and I said, Lord, what's this, a second? I said, what's this? And he said, don't worry. And his mom screamed, Jesus, Jesus! And, and she was going, she went a brakes. Um, she was going to the windscreen, and I hold her back, pull her back from the windscreen, and one energy. Jesus. Mm -hmm. 
and, and, and watching the vehicle spin in front of you, and I go to serve and, and, pick, and position back myself and make my way back. And I said, Jesus is so good. And I couldn't Amen. find that testimony, so God need to really yes. to speak the testimony. And thanks again. And we we'll pray for me in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, church. Praise God. I greet my pastor in Jesus' name. I greet all saints in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Tonight, I just want to give God thanks for life. I want to give God thanks. I'm in my right mind. Praise God. I want to thank God for where he has brought me from to, to where I am today. It doesn't matter where you're going. It doesn't matter how professional the pilot is or the driver is. Pray. Pray. It doesn't matter how professional they are. They are human beings. Yes. Praise God. I, re I remember one night um, I was driving my ambulance. But there was a spirit bothering me called depression. And I was going Royal London and I stopped at the light. But it's like I've just gone into a different world. And car behind me, there was beeping me. They were flashing. And I said, why are they flashing me? When I looked, the light was already changed and come back to red. When I get to Royal London Hospital, I told my colleagues, you know what, you need to take over. But then, <laughs> I had a friend that I used to minister to tell her about church. She said, oh, I don't want to come to your church. It's be a hypocrite, their church. But I continued to pray till one day she said, <laughs> she want to get baptized. I said, you don't need to come to my church. Just find a church and get baptized. During my depression state, I found the same friend. And she said, you know what? I'm going to let this lady pray for you. Her name is Sister Rose. Is Sister Rose here? <laughs> that lady been praying for me for two years and I never met her. She been inviting me to this church and I said, I'm all right in my church. She said, um, she said, you need to come. I said, I'm all right in my church. But depression was eating out my head. I was at the train station, praise God. <laughs> I hear a voice said, why don't you jump? I said, not now. <laughs> I take three weeks off work. I park up my car and I didn't come out of my room. As close as the bathroom is, me and the bathroom ain't no friend. I don't cook. Frost is upon frost is. This is the bowl. Bowl upon bowl upon bowl. Shout out the bowl, sire. Bowl upon bowl upon bowl. Praise God. But this sister Rose, she never sees from praying. Praise God. <laughs> and one day, I decided to Google this church. I said to my wife, I need to find this church. We Googled the church. Then when I come to the church, I said, but this is Sister Rose Church. So where is this Sister Rose? I've never met her. God bless you, Sister Kimmy. And Sister Rose, there will be nothing too good for me not to give. Amen. Sister Rose prayed for me in season and out of season. When you look into my drawer, tablets upon tablets, like I'm a pharmacist. But God delivered me. Yeah. <laughs> That's the reason why I don't mess about. Everywhere I go, I pray for people. I lay hands. I cast out demons. I cast out spirit. Praise God. So don't be afraid. Speak the word and let God perform it. Speak the word and let God perform the word. Uh -huh. When we speak the word, God perform the word. Uh -huh. When we speak healing, God perform healing. Uh -huh. When we speak deliverance, God perform it. Speak the word uh -huh. and let God perform the word. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus.
Praise the Lord Jesus. Um, greetings, Pastor, all the officers, all the saints, and visiting friends. Um, I'm thanking God from the pit that He brought me from. I didn't grow up in church, so I've, it's only been about a year and a half. And I'm just thanking God for the hope. Because when you're out in the world, there's no hope. You know, you, you have nothing to look forward to, there's nothing to anchor yourself into. And I'm just thanking God for the hope and from the pit he's brought me from. Um, my brother, he was, he was on his, he's looking for an internship for the uni. And um, he wasn't getting no offers because he was living in Birmingham, but he wants to get a placement in London. So a few months he's been applying, but he has had no success. So I, I just said it as passing, I was like, come church, fast and pray. I didn't think he took it on. But he came to um, church and then my mom said, you know he's been fasting, he's fasting right now. So I said, glory to God. Um, he came, I think he came to the altar and he had a little prayer. The, he went to an interview. So one of the interviews he went to, um, I think he had, he had been rejected because they accepted someone else. But what had happened, but what happened after a few, few days afterwards, Turns out that person dropped out, they called him back and that person dropped out. And then, um, so they started interviewing again. And then for some reason, just liked him. So I'm saying, if a sinner can come here and get deliverance, yes. it's about church, it's so, it comes. so uh, yeah, to God be the glory, in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I give thanks to God for the authority of the church, the pastor, and all saints. I give thanks to God for every one of you. Um, today, while we sang, you know, greet uh, God, heal him, a prayer quickly just escaped from my heart. And the prayer was, Lord, in this great assembly that will all be in your presence, I want to hear these voices if the Lord allows me to identify it was you. Be there. Be there. It was just very strong in my heart that... Lord, look at this. We are all, you know, singing side to side, hailing him. In my heart, I was like, Lord, why will we appear in your presence? May this same be the case. May I not be there and somehow, I don't know if I'll be able to identify you, but nobody should be missing in the camp. That was a prayer that escaped from my heart. That, Lord, let's also be enjoying this fellowship in your presence when your glory shows up. That was the first thing that came to my heart. And then the second bit was... You know, we spoke about storm. Just today, I was just recounting on that, about storm that comes. Storm comes. It's normal for every Christian. Storm must come. And the Bible said that when it comes, not if it comes. That if you build your house upon the rock, when it comes, it will stand. It's not if it comes, it's when it comes. And one of the things that was coming very strongly in my heart, I remember a section of a hymn, he said, with Christ in my vessel, I smile at the storm. That kind of audacity of faith. In my heart, I was like, God, I just want that. I just, I just want that even more, even more. And just, just to exit that, also to encourage anybody here that never lose that. Never lose Jesus in your vessel. It's a huge risk. Storms are not just there to push your ship. Storms are not just there to give you a shipwreck. It takes you to where you don't want to go. Storms, if you are setting eastward, by the time the storm is over, you will appear somewhere else. But with Jesus in your vessel, you will smile at the storm. It's just such a refreshing thing. You know, I have, I have many reasons, my testimonies are a lot about how God answers prayer. But it just gives me a bit more faith when I hear this testimony. And in my heart, I was just saying that don't trivialize any testimony from God turning darkness into light, from God healing someone, delivering someone from sin, and from God sorting out the issue of your soul. I just love Jesus. He's so simple and so available to attend to every section of my life. And when she was saying that sometimes you just think, um, I don't really need to call God about this. Let me try it myself. He says, oh, what needless pain. We, oh, it's needless. So I just felt a new more love that, okay, I'll push in a bit more. 
more faith rise, more faith rise. I praise him for every one of us in Jesus' name. I glad when the Lord have planted the seeds in me. Um, I can remember when I used to smile and he used to give my mother hell. Oh Jesus. He used to, to strip me in the yard. Um, you just want to hear, ooh. I know a shot is coming over the fence for me. And I gone. Um, and Sundays, Sundays, Sundays school teacher used to come to me. Mother used to beg them, return him back. The only time on Tuesdays, on Tuesdays, remember, I don't know if you remember Tony Young, who used to play old time religion. That's the only time I used to eat to the yard, early. Um, yeah. And can you remember one time I'm coming home, follow a bad company every night on the road. And I'm coming home late. And all I can hear, what what up here and why? And when I look up, I'm going now I look up in her. And when time see the see the we say, Jesus. I said, me a Christian, me a Christian. <laughs> and then, when we look up, we hear one of the boys say, hey boy, Jeremy, you're not Christian, you're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> and we said, I'm said, I'm said, love him, love him. We keep going. We know you, because me and me used to go to Jonestown School together. Mm. And, and me I go there, and one of them said, hey boy, come back. Empty out your pocket. Mm. I made to open pack it and give them one more and go on. But I glad, I glad the seed was planted. Yes. Though I never was a Christian, yes. I can call upon you. Yes. Please, I need prayer and I need strength. My brother, I was just going to come up here and just say two words. Yes. But if the brother said, all the children said two words. <laughs> <laughs> Please pray for me. I'm on the battlefield. And he's keeping me alive. So please pray for me. Praise the Lord, church. We bring the Spirit of God with our pastor, all the saints. Greetings in Jesus' name. You've got thanks that could be found in his house another time. You know, I'm asking God to keep all of us. Brethren, I know the devil don't like to hear me speak. Even last week when testimony service was going on, I wanted to testify. And I come in like, I'm sitting there, Bridget, and I tell you, I, went out, I, went, I tell you I was getting a fight. Right there in my seat, I'm sitting down, and I'm getting, when I'm in the fight, you wouldn't even understand, Bridget. And I was thinking, and I was thinking about, like, I was thinking about, like, you know, when, where God took me from, and the testimony that I was going to give, Bridget, is one day when somebody upset me so much. Right, and they end up, and, and they came to, to where I live. Mm. Now, I was already angry before they come. So when they come, there was no more talking to me because I talk already. Because I'm a person, I don't like to talk too long. So when they came and I put on the first stab in their leg, and when I was gonna go for that fatal stab now, Bridget, when I went like that, my hand couldn't move. When I tell you my hand could not move, my hand couldn't move, but, my, but within my heart, I, I was stabbing it, but my hand couldn't move. So, you see, Reggie, I have a lot to give God thanks for. I have a lot to give God thanks for. I know you hear it in my voice. I know you hear my heart right now. But regardless of what's going on, I'm still going to keep on pressing on. You see, because a ship is more safe at the harbor 
but the ship was not made to stay at the harbor, it was made to sail. And there's going to be some winds. There's going to be some waves. I'm going to hold on. And you know when I stand there, like, I give God thanks. When I stood there, Bridget, what came to me was the love of God. No, the love of God so rich and pure. So measureless and strong. Say so it shall forever more endure the saints and angels song and I'm praying that the love of God will be in my heart and all of our hearts and brethren I don't know I always get this message to give the church but be strong in God because there come at a time where we are not going to able to gather like this the time is closer than what we think and hence why the fight is coming on more and more and more and more. Hence why the distractions are even more and more and more and more. But all I can say for myself and for all of us, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might in Jesus' name. Praise Lord Jesus. Praise Lord Jesus. Praise Lord Jesus. I greet my pastor, saints of the most high God. I greet you all in Jesus' name. I give my thanks for, for being here tonight. And uh, I love the song when it says that um, um, on land or sea, what matters where? Where Jesus is, it is heaven there. And I give God thanks for salvation. You know, I was, as I heard the testimonies, I was looking back at a time when I was in Jamaica. And um, so on my father's land, we got a, we got a big, um, we got a big uh, breadfruit tree, a big yellow heart breadfruit tree. And I remember one day I was climbing the tree and I fell out the tree. And I fell and I, I hit, I hit my, uh, my right side. And I'll never forget when I got up. Oh, bear in mind, before, before I get, that, get to a stage, when I, was, before, when I was a sinner, before I get saved, I used to read my Bible and pray. So there were times when I used I, so I, I know about the word of God by then. You know what I'm saying? So, so when I fell out the tree now, and I was, I was limping because, another thing as well, because where I'm from in, in Manchester, we had a cousin um, that used to work at the health center in Malgoli. And it was, this called Tiny, but she's, they call her Miss White. So she was the daughter of uh, our cousin called Douglas White. She was come from uh, Endeavor. And I guarantee you that if any of us from our district had to go to, to, the, to the health center, as long as you see it's a white surname, we get it through first. No matter if we got there late, we get it through first. Because as long as she see the white surname, she knows that we are family. And then on top of that, one of my cousins used to work at Mandeville Hospital. So if, I, if we needed anything quick and fast, we just go and see our cousin. So like I said, the way I'm saying it, so when I fell out the tree now, I was limping like this, and I was walking and limping. And then my mom and all, they, they were encouraging me, saying, oh, go to the doctor, go, to, go see Tiny, go see Mass Artel at the hospital. I said, no, 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 I'm not going, I'm not going, I'm not going. And then one day, I had enough of it, and it was, the, the pain was licking me down. And I said, I said, God, I said, just like Peter, James and John, when they saw the, the, the layman, and they said, silver and gold have I none. Yes. Said, such as I have, I give unto thee. Yes. And they said, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, how I rise up and walk. Yes. And I'm telling you, it was about, maybe two, three, the, the leg get better. The leg get better. And I'm saying, thank God that, you know, he taught me some bits that I could practice it and manifest it to know that there's a God and God is real. You pray my strength in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord Jesus. We're giving God thanks for all those testimonies from the brothers there. I must first reverend the spirit of God, greet my pastor, saints of God, in the mighty name of Jesus. My testimony is blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. But I have a big responsibility. I am the big brother of all those brothers. And I do not want to be a Reuben. So I'm asking for your sincere prayer that I be a good example for all the brothers there. And that I would act the right way so I could be a good example in Jesus' name.
Praise the Lord Church, praise the Lord Church. I greet Grandma Pastor and I greet all the saints in Jesus' name. I got thank God for life and strength to be in this house today. And when all the brothers were singing and speaking, I was looking at the numbers of brothers that were in the church, that are in the church now, in, the, in comparison to the women. And then I was thanking God that it could be worse because there was a time in London where the streets just roamed with pure women elderly and kids during the World War II. And I thank God because, well, I thank God that I wasn't born in those times because if I was born in those times, then right now I would have either been drafted into war, been out either training in the military base or out in the battlefield. And I was looking at that plaque there, even though there's a lot of things that we don't see in our church, that was during World War I, but what I was thinking of is World War II, because during World War I, there wasn't really a lot of aerial threats and aerial planes. And what came to mind is, during those times, people would have to be listening out for sirens, because other countries may come to send bombs, atomic bombs, into the city. And whenever the siren would come, the civilians would have to go into hiding in bunkers, in caves underneath the ground because obviously they don't want to get bombed. And I thank God I wasn't born in those times because I don't have to be thinking, I'm um, listening out for sirens or listening out to hear any police to tell me to go into hiding because of other countries coming to bomb. But I thank God for life in general. And I thank God for keeping all of us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord Church. Praise our church. I greet my grandma and pastor and all the saints in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God that I'm still alive and well and in this house. I was just listening to the brother's testimonies and really taking it in, brethren, because you shouldn't really take it lightly, especially what Brother Adrian was saying. How he used to be on the road and doing whatnot. I thank God that I don't have that experience. And I thank God that I was raised in church because I know my roots. I thank God that I was literally raised in church because if I wasn't raised in church, I don't know what, what I would be doing or if I would be here. And I don't plan on leaving. So you can try, do what you want, but I ain't going to leave. And I thank God for protecting me, covering me, keeping me. I have a testimony. I remember when my family went swimming. Literally, I can't remember how old I was, but I can't swim. Well, no, I can't swim, but it's fine. Um, literally, uh, yeah, we went swimming. And then before everyone came out, <laughs> I went to the pool. I didn't know nothing because I was still a, still a young boy. Literally, stepped in the pool. I saw a beach pool in there. I tried to go for it, lost my footing, ended up at the bottom of the pool, laying down on my back, brethren. I literally gave up at the bottom. I, won't, I, I won't, wasn't thinking to die, but obviously I just gave up. And I thank God that these girls came to my rescue. And another time, I remember um, when I was in secondary school, um, I was just at the, basically the corner shops, and I stepped into the road, brethren. This car literally came out of nowhere. car came out of nowhere, hit me. And I thank God that that wasn't my life because anything could have happened. That car could have literally crushed me. I could have landed on my head, break my neck, be paralyzed. But I thank God for his strength and his mercy. And I was taking what Brother Michael was saying as well. Literally, I love Michael so much, you know. I love him so much, literally. And what he was saying hit me because he says he wants the church to be better. And obviously, I want the church to be better, but I have to better myself for the church to be better. And I, I thank God that I'm just alive and well in this house. And it's a blessing to be here in Jesus' name. I'm a glad pilgrim on my way, going to glory land. Jesus, my only hope and stay, holds of me by my hand. It's such a joy to understand things that I never knew. Keeping my promise to the Lord, I'm going through. 